Hello everyone. Welcome back to this online class. Today we are going to look at uh, Papian differential equation. And in particular, I want us to look at uh, the method of one variable separable. Now we are given the equation x z cubed dx minus z dy plus 2y dz is equals to zero. We need to show that this equation is integrable. That means it has a solution and the other part, we need to find the general solution. So let's start with part A, showing that the equation is integrable. So we are going to say, let, let x vector be equal to pi plus qj plus rk, where p is the coefficient of dx. So this is the same as x z cubed i q is the coefficient of dy which is negative z so I'll, I'll write a negative here I'll write negative so that's minus z j and our r is 2i so plus 2i k now we need to show that x dot cal x is equals to zero now let's find uh, cal x. So I write uh, cal of x that is the same as the cross product of the del operator. Let me write here cross, uh, del operator cross x. We are the same as determinant. Here we have i, j, k partial, partial x, partial, partial y, partial, partial z. Then the components of uh, x here, we, we have x, z cubed, followed by negative z, followed by two, y. Determinant of a three by three matrix. Let's reduce this to determinant of a two by two matrices. Using the method of Laplace uh, transform, or simply Laplace method, not Laplace transform, Laplace method. So here I'll write here plus, here we have minus, and then here we have the plus. So what we have here is positive i. You delete the row and the column containing i, then you write what you remain with. We realize that upon deleting, the first row and first column, we remain with partial, partial y, negative z, partial, partial z, to y. Go to negative j, delete the row and the column containing j. So that is first row, second column. We remain with partial, partial x, x, z cubed, partial, partial z, to y. And finally, positive k, delete the row and the column containing k, that is first row, third column. You remain with partial, partial x, x, z cubed, partial, partial y, negative z. So now we need to find the determinant. Let's start with the first term. In the first term, we are going to get i, it's just positive i. When you differentiate, uh, when you differentiate two y with respect to y, you get two. Then minus, when you differentiate negative z with respect to z, you get negative one. We have minus j. Again, we differentiate uh, 2y with respect to x, that is zero. Then minus differentiate xz cubed with respect to z, that will give us 3xz squared plus k. Differentiate negative z with respect to x, that is zero. Minus differentiate 
x z cubed with respect to y that is zero. So what we have is uh, this will be three i plus three x z squared j plus zero k, which I don't even need to write. That is cal x. What about x dot cal x? So we find x dot cal x. That will be, uh, let's write uh, those vectors in column form. I'll start by writing the vector x. Vector x is uh, x z cubed negative z to y. You dot this with uh, cal x, which is 3, then 3x three z squared, uh, followed by 0. If you multiply the corresponding components, we are going to get uh, 3x z cubed as along the first row. Second row, uh, we love minus 3x z cubed plus 0. And so this will give you 0 because this will cancel with this. And the result is equals to zero. So therefore, the ODE, that given ODE, let me write the given equation. The given ODE is integrable. That means it has a solution it has a solution. You can't be able to solve it and get a general solution. Remember, every time you're given Fafian differential equations, at times you may be given an equation that has no solution. You might be solving something that has no solution. So the first thing that you have to do when you're given such kind of equations, you must first of all verify that the equation can be solved. That, that equation has a solution by showing that x dot cal x is equals to zero. So now let's go ahead and solve it now that we know it has a solution. So in part b, in part b, we now solve it. Now look at our equation. We go back to our equation. This one. If you look at this equation, you realize that the variable x is separable. It is possible to collect the x and dx as one term. That means the variable x is separable. So I'll write here that clearly the x variable or the variable x, variable x is separable. That means our equation can be written as, I'm going to divide by z cubed on both sides. So when you divide by z cubed on both sides, you are going to get x dx. Then uh, now we have minus z dy over z cubed. Then uh, we have plus 2y dz. This is again over z cubed, and this is equals to zero. And uh, I can't see, I can simplify this to get, uh, let's see, we're going to get x dx minus, uh, now that would be one over z squared dy. Then we have plus two y over z cubed dz, and this will give us zero. So, I have divided by z cubed on both sides. And then I have simplified to get this equation. Now this equation, the variable x is separable. This equation can be written as, you see these are the, the last two terms. These last two terms, 
can be written as derivative of phi. So you can write or x dx plus d phi is equals to zero. And this phi is a function of y and z. In fact, let, let me write it explicitly so that you can see that that phi depends on x, y, and z. So d phi of not x, y, and z, it is a function of y, z, d phi y, z is equals to zero. So the, the d phi here is the same as, you can say where, where what you're calling d phi of, of y, z, d phi of y, z, is the same as negative one over z squared dy plus two y over z cubed dz. This is an exact differential. When you talk of d phi, is the total differential of phi, which you can write as the d phi here, total differential of phi can be written as partial phi, partial y dy, plus partial phi, partial z dz, is equals to negative one over z squared dy, plus two y over z cubed dz. So now let's equate the corresponding uh, the components or simply the coefficients of the corresponding differentials. So if I, the coefficient of dy will give us partial phi with respect to y is equals to negative one over z squared. This will give you the first equation. What about coefficient of dz? You're going to get partial phi with respect to z is equals to should be equal to two y over z cubed. This is equation two. These equations we need because our task is to find the unknown function phi. So let us integrate this the first equation. Uh, you can write this as d phi is equals to negative one over z squared dy. Then integrate both sides, integral, integral. So you see integral and derivative, they are inverses of each other, so this will cancel. So that uh, this will give us phi of yz equal to we, when you're integrating partially with respect to y, you assume that z is constant. So the negative one over z squared, that is a constant. So this will give us negative, then you integrate dy, that is y. So this will give us negative y over z squared. But remember, the constant of integration, because uh, z is constant, our constant of integration must depend on the z variable. So we say plus, g of z. g of z is an arbitrary function of z, which is the constant of integration. So this one that we have found, let me bracket it. This equation is our solution for that unknown function phi of yz, provided that you know the arbitrary function g of z. And how do I find g of z? So from this equation, if I differentiate phi with respect to z, partial phi, partial z, what will I get? I'm going to get 2y over z cubed plus g prime of z. So now, what I have found as our derivative, you now compare it with equation two. We compare this and this. Look at the left-hand side, partial phi, partial z 
equation two, we also had partial phi, partial z. So that means we can equate the right hand sides of those two equations that we are comparing so that we can say, when we equate the right hand side, we can now say that therefore, 2y plus 2y over z cubed plus g prime of z should be equal to this other one that is uh, 2y over z cubed. So then what can we say? Because this will cancel. We say therefore our g prime of z is equals to zero. So get g of z integrate. So g of z is the integral of zero with respect to z and that should give us a constant c. So then you take it back here, it means this is c, g of z. So that means now we know our phi of y, so therefore our phi of yz should now be equal to negative y over z squared plus a constant c. But I don't need to write the constant. That constant is not important. So you can also, you can just say, or phi, the function we needed, is simply equal to negative y over z squared. That's what we use. So let me take you back to the equation we were solving. This equation, we go back here. That's the equation we were solving. And so when you integrate, when you integrate both sides, I inter let me introduce integrals. When you integrate this, this, and also this one, what am I going to get? This will give us x squared over two plus phi of yz is equals to a constant c. That is our general solution. So let me replace phi of yz here in this, this one, replace phi of yz so that our general solution it cannot be written as, so you can now say there for general solution, It's now x squared over two plus the phi, which we have found negative y over z squared is equals to a constant c. I can just write c over two. Let me have this as c over two so that I can get rid of two. Here you also write c over two. So when I multiply by two, I'm going to get x squared minus two uh, y over z squared is equals to a constant c. So that is our general solution where c is an arbitrary constant. So this is how to apply the method of one variable separable when solving Fafian differential equations. It is very, very simple. All you need to know is that once one variable is separable, then the remaining two variables, they form an exact differential, which can be written as d phi. And so your task is to find the unknown function phi, which I have shown you how to find. And so you'll be able to get the right solution. So thank you all for watching. When you meet next time, we look at other problems in partial differential equations please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That is Professor Francis Okej. Also, don't forget to comment, to like, and to share my video. When you go to the YouTube search, please type Prof. Francis Okej. You will you will find me right there. Let's meet next time. Bye-bye.